Hello and welcome to part one of this series of videos that are an introduction to the mathematics of signals. In this part we will introduce continuous signals and spectra. For an overview of the series please follow the link on the top of your screen. So first of all an outline. Uh, this part will try and answer questions such as what is a signal? What is a spectrum? How can we quantify properties of a signal and spectrum? I've often referred to these as the signal statistics. And we'll write all these things mathematically as the basis for more advanced analysis that will come later. So we'll start by looking at uh, signals, a signal and its basic statistics. So here we uh, have a little graph of a signal. Uh, here it comes. And the main point is that a signal is, is a quantity that can vary with respect to time. Um, so we're not really saying what it is here. Uh, we won't really generally, I'm trying to generally stay away from the physics in this course. Uh, but it, so it could be something like voltage, it could be something like temperature, pressure in acoustics, force from a force transducer, it could be anything really, uh, typically that you measure. Um, but the point here is it's not just an instantaneous value. It's not like you just say, oh, what's, what's the temperature? Oh, it's 22 degrees and you expect that to stay like that for a while. Um, all these things are varying. Of course, even temperature varies if you measure it for long enough, but acoustic signals vary pretty quick. Not, not the quickest of all signals, but they vary like potentially thousands of times a second. So it's so pretty fast. And uh, this is the kind of plot you might see on an oscilloscope. Uh, so we've got time uh, running along the horizontal axis in seconds there. I've not really bothered putting any units on here. It's an arbitrary um, kind of rate of variation and then i've got my signal x of t so it's a function of time t up the vertical axis and again i've not really bothered with any scales apart from marking where zero is um, and yeah the point here is that x is a function of t that's what t being t time in the brackets means uh, and we say it's continuous uh, any value of t you pick you will always get some value of x the signal uh, so i would say you know you can kind of zoom in as much as you like in time and you'll always see some variation you're never going to kind of run out to a point where you just don't see any variation anymore unless, unless of course the signal is constant but there's always potentially more data there you could zoom in to see you've got infinitely fine resolution in time so that would be my definition of a signal uh, let's just quickly talk about some of the basic statistics uh, one of the obvious ones that you'll see uh, most often in audio will be the peak of the signal. Uh, this is often associated with clipping. Uh, if the signal gets too big and you clip it on the input of whatever you're recording on, which generally sounds pretty awful. And we don't care whether it's clipped because it's gone uh, too big positive or too big negative. We're just going to say what is the maximum value. Uh, so here I'm just saying what is the maximum value from uh, little t time is naught to big T on the right hand side. Uh, and then we're going to look at not just x but the magnitude of x. So that's what these two uh, vertical lines mean, the magnitude of x. We don't care what sign. And in fact, actually in this, in fact, actually in this example the peak value is negative. Uh, so our kind of peak boundaries will be these two horizontal red lines. Um, of how what extremes a signal gets to plus or minus and that's going to tell us about whether it might clip another common measure that you you will have heard of uh, is the mean of something uh, what is the sort of average value people more commonly say um, in science we generally say the mean and basically what you do if you go along there is you just kind of go along adding things up and then kind of take an average um, and the way we'll have to do it here for continuous data is a little bit different. So when we say take, add things up as we go along, we're going to look, basically what we're going to do is work out the area under the curve. So we just sort of go along, if we're adding things up, we're finding out the area, because um, it's sort of what the value times how long it was. So it's, it becomes an area time times whatever the quantity of the signal is. So area in the graph, as some of you may know, that is going to end up being an integral. Uh, so for continuous data, what we're going to end up writing is an integral from 0 to t, this range we're looking at for big T, that is. And then we're going to integrate our signal, uh, little x of t, little t, uh, with respect to time under the graph to find the area under the graph. And then we're going to divide by the big length t um, to, get the, to get the mean, to get the average. 
And this is equivalent to if you had lots of uh, numbers in a sequence, uh, adding them all up and then dividing by the number of them. Uh, it's just the sort of continuous time version. And um, what we'll see there is, if you look at the signal, you can see that actually it generally goes positive as much as it goes negative. In fact, that's pretty much a fundamental feature of audio signals. Uh, if you look in uh, audio sort of electronics, they will always use a capacitor to sort of smooth out the average voltage. Uh, so the mean is um, smooth out. And, and if you're looking at pressure in acoustic wave, then we talk about perturbations relative to atmospheric pressure. So by definition, the mean is zero. Um, so it's going to sit right there on that centre line. It's not going to tell us much in this case, but I'm going to continue talking about the mean because it's kind of one of the easiest statistics to understand. Neither of those have told us too much. Now those are really characteristic of um, what the signal's doing overall. The mean told us very little. The peak just told us whether it clipped. Um, and what people are often interested in instead is, is things to do um, with power in the signal. And um, I'm going to try and plot the power down here. Now, now the power of a signal, we don't really actually have enough information to, to say what that is, because what power you get from the signal depends on what load it's driving, what impedance it's going into. And impedance is a word you might have heard in electronics, but you also get it in acoustics and, and other things as well. So we'll have a sort of acoustic impedance as well. But we won't worry about that now. Uh, the main thing to remember is that regardless of what quantity you're looking at, you always find that the power in the signal is proportional to the amplitude squared. So we can look at x squared, the signal squared, um, and that is going to tell us something about power, albeit only proportional to. So this uh, is going to get squared, and what you're going to see is, that, of course, it's always positive. Uh, it's particularly large at the peak values, uh, not so large at areas that are sort of fairly close to zero because x, when you square something, it emphasizes the big numbers. But the most important thing is if we average this, so if we look at the mean of this power, we'll find that because it's always positive, uh, you're actually going to average to something that is non-zero. So you're going to get an average there that isn't zero. And this is what is called the mean square, and you, you'll see this um, come up. Um, so it is the same formula as we have for the mean. Uh, it's 1 over the time period, t, and then an integral from 0 to t, but this time of x squared rather than just x. And that you do see, um, but usually we want to know something more about the signal, and uh, for that reason, what we tend to do is go back to the actual kind of signal units. So we squared the signal to get from signal to something that was proportional to power. So it follows that we'll take a square root to go back again. And this leads us uh, to the root mean square um, mean, which is one of the things that you'll hear most often. You'll hear about RMS voltages and RMS pressures and all sorts of things. And what that means is we've taken our signal, we've squared it to have something that's more to do with power, uh, we've averaged that, and then we've square rooted to get back uh, to something that's actually in the original units of the original signal, be that volts or pascals or whatever it might be. So just to surmise, uh, here we have our signal, and we might look at the mean, uh, which is always zero for audio signals, but just a useful simple formula to look at for, in terms of understanding the maths. Uh, we might look at the peak, which tells you about clipping, or we might look at the root mean squared, which is the most sort of useful in terms of generally telling something about the signal, um, and that it actually tells you about the signal power. Now another quantity related to that I'll just introduce quickly uh, is called the crest factor. Um, and this is a measure of sort of how peaky the signal is. And it's simply a ratio of the peak to the RMS. So it's quite straightforward. I'll give you two little examples here just to illustrate that. So uh, if we've got a transient sound, uh, maybe like something like a drum hit that's mostly zero for most of the time and then just suddenly spikes up for a short period of time, of course, like all the other signals, we'll find that the mean is zero. If you look at the peak, this could be quite significant. Uh, it's I've put some units on here, minus one to plus one, rather arbitrarily. Uh, and this has a peak magnitude of 0 0.735, if you look through the whole signal. 
If you work out the RMS, you'll find it's much smaller than that uh, because we're averaging all the power over all the time. And although there was quite a lot of power and transient came along, if you average it over the whole signal period, it's going to be very small. So that actually comes out as 0.035. So if you look at the ratio of those, which is the crest factor, you'll find this has got a crest factor of 21, which is quite big. Uh, if, on the other hand, you look at something like a square wave, which is something you might have come across if you're into kind of uh, synthesis and electronic music, uh, has a particular kind of tonality uh, people use a lot. Um, this is just varying from plus or minus some particular amplitude, and it's pretty much instantaneously going in between. It's always plus or minus uh, that amplitude. So again, we'll see the mean is naught because it's positive as much as it's negative. Uh, the peak, uh, in this case, is 0.8 on the scale I've drawn. Uh, so the positive and the negative peaks are the same, uh, and it's always at one of those two peak values. If we look at the RMS, we actually find, oddly, perhaps, that that's exactly the same. Um, so what's happened here? Well, either you're at plus 0.8, so x squared is the square of 0 0.8, 0 0.16, uh, or you're at minus 0.8, which is also squared to also give 0.16. You average that, you get 0.16, uh, and then you take the square root and you go back to 0.8 to again. So the positive value and the average, the negative value, both square to the same number. So actually we find that the RMS is equal to the peak because it's always at a peak value. And if you divide those two, you'll find that you get a crest factor of one. This is basically the limit. You can't get a crest factor lower than one. So there's a little example there uh, of how these measures might work out for two signals. And I'm going to go on a little bit and just introduce spectra quickly. Uh, so here's our signal again. Um, and a spectrum is another way to show the same data. So what we'll have here is another quantity. Uh, I've used capital X. Um, there's a little underscore D, which will uh, turn up the reason for that in a, in a much later um, one of these talks, uh, and it's a function of frequency now, which is in hertz. And it's just another way to show the show the same data. It shows the sort of amount, so the amplitude, uh, the magnitude of different frequencies that are present. So in my graph here, these are all positive. Again, I've got these kind of little vertical lines around XD just to show I'm taking the magnitude of this. What that basically means is that I'm not thinking about the phase of this data at the minute. Um, that is part of the spectrum, but I'm not showing it on this graph. We'll come to it at a later talk. Um, and frequencies are measured in hertz, and that is how many times they repeat per second. So if it's sort of units per second, then what we're actually seeing is that hertz is equivalent to one over seconds. So I say they show the same data, uh, they're showing equivalent data, but frequency is the inverse of time. Time is how long something lasts, so how long a variation lasts. You see some variations here, are they, they lasting for a short time or lasting for a long time? Uh, whereas frequency is uh, how fast something varies. Uh, and we see slow variation on the left of the graph and the amount of the fast varying stuff on the right hand side of the graph. And you can see here that um, on the kind of frequency scale that I've got, most of the kind of characteristics of this signal are in the lower kind of frequency range. It tails off quite quickly, so, so most things are varying quite slowly there. Again, this is continuous, uh, so you have infinitely fine resolution frequency. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of working with the idea here that you could keep zooming in and you would always find more detail uh, of the frequency. As, you know, the spectrum would always be different for whatever frequency you're looking at. Again, we can think about power. Uh, so just to draw these two things together, um, we might think about the power of the signal. And again, the power is proportional to the amplitude squared. So the thing we might look at is something with the uh, value XD, the spectrum magnitude squared. And this is, gets called a power spectrum. And um, it will look a bit like this. So again, it sort of tends to focus on the peak values, tends to de-emphasize the smaller values because we've squared it. And the thing I just want to sort of just mention last, just to tie these two concepts together, is that if you looked at signal power, which is proportional to the magnitude of the signal square, 
and you looked at the power spectrum, which is proportional, which is the where the power is proportional to the uh, magnitude of the spectrum squared, and you look at the area under both of those, so the sum total power in each of them, the energy in both, then you'll find that this is actually the same. So I just mentioned this uh, just as a kind of little way to tie these two together. It's important uh, for various types of analysis, but this is just kind of a way, another a sort of simple way of saying that they both show the same data. They both have the same power. So if you look at if you look at the signal either of these two ways, you'll see the same power, whether you look at it as a signal or you look at it as a spectrum. So they're just showing the same data in different ways. So just to summarize, uh, a signal is a quantity that can vary with respect to time. I say can because you could have a signal that's constant for a bit, but usually they will vary with respect to time. We've assumed that this variation with time is, is continuous, so you can kind of um, zoom in and always see more variation. There's no sort of limit to how fine in time you could look, you know, be, them, be it seconds or microseconds or picoseconds. And this is what many in the audio world would call analog. Next time we'll talk about signals that are more like digital signals. We've defined some signal statistics, ways of kind of putting a number on properties of the signal. We've talked about the mean, the peak, the RMS. Uh, we've discussed their meanings. Uh, we've expressed them mathematically. Uh, and that's going to be useful later just sort of as a foundation to help us understand other things that are coming. Um, and Spectrum shows the same data, but with respect to frequency, which is one over time. It's how fast uh, things are varying instead of how long they take. And later on, we'll see how these are related mathematically in one of the later talks in this series. Finally, we've seen that signals and spectra can both be used, can both be squared to estimate the power, uh, and the total power in both is the same because they're just different ways of showing the same data. So I hope you found that interesting and please do uh, watch up the next talk uh, on sample data. Thank you.